Hi everyone, this is Jutin from Chattery DSP, and today I'm doing a little walkthrough of Chow Multi Tool, which is a, a new plugin that we've been working on. Currently, the plugin is in beta, so uh, you can try it out right now, but there's a lot of new features, bug fixes, and design changes that will still happen before the official release. But that said, I wanted to do a little walkthrough to show the current functionality that's available in Chow Multi Tool. Um, and give you guys an idea of what it can do. So the original idea for Chow Multi Tool was basically that I had a bunch of little test plugins that were basically meant to test out some DSP algorithms, but uh, I found that I was using them more and more often, so I figured maybe I'd package them up in a more official plugin so that I could use it and other folks could use it too. So, um, Chow Multitool is a little different from most of our other plugins. Uh, it's mainly made up of a bunch of standard effects and utilities that you might also find uh, in some of your DAWs stock plugins or things like that. Uh, but the idea is to provide very high quality implementations and also to give ourselves some chances to experiment with how we're designing some of the backend uh, features in the plugin and also how some of the UI interactions work. And hopefully you'll get a sense of some of the new UI stuff we're doing here in a minute. So first we've got an EQ. So this is the, the first tool in the plugin is this EQ. Um, and it's pretty basic EQ. We've got eight bands, parametric, um, and you can, you know, change the cutoff frequency, the Q, the gain, all that stuff that you're used to. Uh, you've got these different filter shapes as well that you can play around with. Um, one thing that we spent a lot of time on is making sure that the plugin responds well, that the EQ responds well when we go to frequencies near the Nyquist frequency so we don't have any cramping and the phase response stays pretty natural as we go up to those, uh, those high frequencies. Uh, and we've also got a linear phase mode here. so. If I uh, adjust the latency in the analyzer here, then yeah, we can see that it comes out to be linear phase once we get uh, everything set up right in the, uh, in the analyzer. Next, we've got this little wave shaper, and uh, yeah, I did a demo of this a little while back, but uh, we've got a few new, uh, a few new features in this as well. So basically, here we've got a basic tan age wave shaper. You can control the gain and go to some other shapes. So this is a wave folder. Um, and then some of the more fun things are in these last few options here, so you can draw in your own wave shape, which is a, a lot of fun, cool stuff that you can get out of this. Uh, and then a newer one that we added here is uh, the math wave shaper, so you can just type in an equation, and uh, yeah, you'll get something that sounds hopefully uh, interesting in some way, so we can do we can do a wave folder in here as well, or maybe we do uh, something like this. So yeah, some cool stuff you can get out of the wave shaper. Next we've got a basic signal generator. So again, this is like something you might find in your DAW. Um, but yeah, so we've got a, a basic uh, different uh, waveforms here. And uh, yeah, nothing too special with the signal generator. Uh, next up, we've got an analog EQ. So this is uh, a little different from the, uh, a little different from the eight band EQ. This is meant more for kind of uh, more global, uh, frequency shaping rather than more like fine-tuned things like you might want to do with a parametric EQ. But you've got uh, kind of this uh, maybe somewhat recognizable uh, shape that you will get from messing with the base frequencies. And we've got a continuous control for 
adjusting the uh, overall bass frequency, and then we've got some similar controls for the uh, the treble. And yeah, so this is modeled after a fairly well known uh, EQ from the uh, from uh, studios of the 60s and 70s. Uh, next up, we've got this band splitter. So this might be very useful or might not, depending on your DAW's capabilities. But the idea here is that if you want to maybe split up a track into multiple bands for doing uh, some plug-in processing and then have them sum back together um, in a way that uh, that works uh, that that works well and, and reconstructs perfectly, then uh, this uh, this effect will do that for you. So here I've got the low, mid, and high outputs of the plugin routed into these three chains here in bit, in this uh, Bitwig FX layer. So I've got the low coming in on the red uh, track here, mid on the yellow, and high on the uh, on the blue track. And so if I play some sound, then I can solo just the lows. or just the highs, or just the mids, and they sum together just like you'd expect. Uh, you can also switch to the two-band mode. And in the two-band mode, the mid, uh, the mid channel will just be empty, basically. Um, but yeah, so that's the band splitter. Next up, we've got this brick wall effect, which uh, is basically just one very steep filter. And you've got some different modes for the type of filter. So if you want a steeper uh, slope, you could use a Chebyshev or an elliptic filter. Uh, and you could also change the filter order to get the exact slope that you're looking for. So yeah, if you want to just isolate uh, or, or completely cut out some of the lower high frequencies in a track. This can be very handy, um, although the phase response isn't quite as good as what you might have in some other spots uh, or with some, some other filters. And finally, we've got this state variable filter here. So this is basically just a state variable filter like you might find in a lot of synths, and we've got uh, a few different modes here for the different types of filters that you can try. Um, and uh, yeah, this is actually a cool thing to show off the clap parameter modulation that we've implemented in the plugin. So all of the parameters can be modulated uh, in a way that's non-destructive. So that means we can have some modulation applied and also move around the base parameter uh, without those two things getting in the way of each other. So that's kind of fun. So yeah, like I said, Chow Multitool is currently in beta. If you'd like to give it a try, there's some links in the description. Um, we're going to be releasing this as a free plugin, hopefully sometime in May. It might take a little bit longer. Um, and yeah, if you have any feedback or things you'd like to see or, or bugs you're noticing, definitely reach out and let us know. Um, and yeah, most of all, I hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, should be a fun plugin.